Music revolutionaries. Hi there and welcome to Music Revolutionaries. A synthesizer is a device that can generate sound electronically. From the late 19th century onwards, the history of the synthesizer is a story of experimentation by numerous people, all pursuing similar goals, to create an electronic musical instrument capable of either producing new sounds never heard before or imitating old sounds using new means. The two names are particularly associated with the synthesizer becoming a mainstream musical instrument. Inventor Robert Moog and performer and composer Wendy Carlos. Their stories are intertwined in the mid-1960s when together they effectively launched the synthesizer revolution. Robert Moog studied classical piano but influenced by his engineer father he also became fascinated with the electronics. In the 1950s electronic music was beginning to reach the public. Louis and B.B. Barron's soundtrack to the sci-fi movie Forbidden Planet was the first entirely electronic movie soundtrack. The Barons and composer-inventor Raymond Scott were important influences on young Robert Moog. At the age of 19, Moog published a design for a theremin in a popular electronics magazine and subsequently began marketing theremin kits. He made enough money out of this to form a company, Moog Music. Initially, Moog Music made theremins and guitar amps, but by 1964, Moog had worked out designs for a voltage control amplifier and an oscillator that were to become the core of the Moog synthesizer. Voltage control means that the behavior of a circuit can be controlled by applying a voltage to it. The concept was developed with the help of composer and inventor Herb Deutsch, who had previously built his own theremin based on Robert Moog's design. At this point though, the Moog synthesizer still lacks some essential ingredients that could make it into a viable musical instrument. The sound emerging from the oscillators lacked variety and shape. In a standard acoustic musical instrument like the guitar, the sound is initiated by plucking a string, but the sound we hear is not just the sound of the string, it's also the way the vibration of the string is modified by the body of the instrument. In effect, the body of the guitar both amplifies the sound and also filters it. We call this the source filter model. The source is the string, the filter is the body. An essential step in the creation of a really useful synthesizer was the inclusion of a voltage controlled filter. Another aspect of the sound of an acoustic instrument is that it changes over time. It begins, carries on for a while and then it ends. Each of these phases of the sound has a particular dynamic shape, which we refer to as attack, decay, sustain and release, or ADSR for short. Collectively, the overall shape of the sound is known as the envelope. The addition of a voltage-controlled envelope generator, originally specified by the composer Vladimir Ushachevsky, gave the synthesizer a way to shape sound over time. The combination of these developments made the Moog synthesizer into a musical instrument that was potentially capable of producing the kind of expressive and tonally varied sound normally associated with acoustic instruments. To prove that this was the case required somebody with a great musical imagination to make music with the Moog synthesizer and show that it was not just a device for making weird spacey sounds. At exactly the right time, along came Wendy Carlos. Carlos had been a student of Wysochewski at the Columbia Princeton Electronic Music Center in New York. In 1968, Wendy Carlos, under the name Walter Carlos, released the album Switched on Bach, an LP of well-known compositions by Johann Sebastian Bach, arranged for the modular Moog synthesizer. Modular, by the way, means that it's made up of discrete modules that can be assembled together in various configurations. Switched on Bar captured the popular imagination and became one of the biggest selling classical albums of all time. The Condensa, composed by Wendy Carlos in the middle of Bach's Brandenburg Concerto No. 3, was the first genuine musical masterpiece for the synthesizer. The musical public was captivated. The synthesizer revolution had begun. Groups like the Beatles and the Rolling Stones bought Moog synthesizers. Modular Moogs were expensive. The one behind me here cost $20,000 in 1968, about the same as a substantial house. The more portable and affordable Mini Moog 
was better suited to live performance and touring. Other manufacturers also entered the field. In London, EMS produced the versatile VCS3 and Cynthia A, which proved popular with rock groups. Both the Mini Moog and the EMS Synthi can be heard on Pink Floyd's classic album, Dark Side of the Moon. By the mid-1970s, there were many different analog synthesizers in production, including the Buchler synths, which were developed around the same time as the Moog synths, and the ARP Odyssey. In 1973, the Roland Corporation began producing the first Japanese compact synth, the SH series. It was used by many artists in the 1970s. Kraftwerk used the Mini Moog and the EMS Synthi A. Brian Eno played the EMS VCS3 in Roxy Music. Blondie used the Roland SH-1000 and the ARP Odyssey in chart-topping songs like Heart of Glass. The golden age of analog synths ended in the early 1980s with the arrival of digital synthesizers. Early digital synths, like the Australian-designed Fairlight, New England Digital Synclavia and the Yamaha GS1 were expensive. Like the modular Moog a decade before, you could buy quite a nice house for the same money. The Yamaha DX7 was a game changer, making digital synthesis affordable for the average person. Now let's have a look at the modular Moog synth. The sound sources are oscillator circuits, which can produce sine waves, triangular waves, square waves. Typically, there is also a noise generating circuit producing white noise. The signal from an oscillator can be sent to various effects modules, the most important being filters and the voltage control amplifiers that are used for envelope generation. Other effects like reverb and delays are also possible and the sequencer module was available. The modular system allowed the buyer to create a system specifically for their individual needs. The most important factor in using a system like this is keeping track of signal flow. Because each module is connected to others via physical cables, you can very quickly end up with a spaghetti-like tangle, which makes troubleshooting difficult. Plus, there was a problem of remembering what you did last time. Analog synth users developed various methods of recording patches on paper so they could be reproduced. To be a skilled user, you had to be quite systematic about it. Now, these days you can buy quite cheaply excellent digital emulations of classic analog synths, but nothing quite compares with the hands-on experience of working with a real one. Thanks to Robert Moog, Wendy Carlos and the others who ushered in the synthesizer revolution, synthesizers whether analog devices or digital emulations, remain a vital part of the world of electronic music.